Welcome to episode number 290, where I'm continuing my series on the channels or shrotas of the body. And in this episode, I'm discussing Majavaha shrotas. Majavaha shrotas is a channel carrying nutrition for the bone marrow and the nerve tissue, which is responsible for our communication, coordination, sensation, learning, and memory. So please stay tuned. Hi there, I'm your host Colette, and on this podcast I will be sharing the teachings of Ayurveda, yoga, and holistic health practices. Now if you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend checking out the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. Thanks for listening, and now here is a new episode. This episode is sponsored by Kerala Ayurveda. Have you ever wanted to uncover the ancient secrets of beauty? Kerala Ayurveda's annual skin and beauty workshop is coming this June, the 24th and 25th, and it's open to all levels. You'll explore the definition of beauty from a holistic perspective, learning lifestyle recommendations for radiant face, hair, skin, and body. Visit keralaayurveda.us slash courses to sign up and use the code BEAUTYELEMENTS for $30 off. You'll find all that information in the show notes. Hi there, and welcome back to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. It's Colette today for a solo episode, and I'm continuing my series on the shrotas or channels of the body. Now, if you're not familiar with the channels of the body, then check out my first episode in this series. It's episode number 272, titled The Food Channel and the Shrotas, and that will give you a really good starting point with an introduction to the Shrotas. In this episode, I'm discussing Maja Vaha Shrotas. Now, Maja Datu is our nervous tissue, and it's located in the bone marrow. Maja Vaha Shrotas is the channel carrying nutrition for the bone marrow and the nerve tissue. The mula or root of this channel are the bones and the joints. Bones are considered to be the root of Majavaha Shrotas and Majadhatu is formed after Ashtidhatu, after the bone tissue. And if you're not familiar with the sequence of Datu formation, I recommend checking out episode number 92, which is titled The Ayurvedic Nutrition of the Datus and shares with you all this fascinating information from Ayurveda about the formation of the tissues and in what sequence they're formed. So that's episode number 92. So as I said, Majad Datu is formed after Ashti Datu or the bone tissue. So Ashti Datu nourishes Majad Datu, our nervous tissue, which is located in the bone marrow, and the bone marrow fills the bones. The opening of Majavaha Shrotas is the synaptic space or cleft, which is basically the space between two neurons across which impulses are transmitted. The passage or marga is the nervous system, the central, peripheral, sympathetic, and parasympathetic nervous system, the brain, and the cavities of the bone like the spinal column and the auditory cavity. The limbic system is part of the brain involved in our behavioral and emotional responses, and these responses occur through Majavaha Shrotas, along with communication, coordination, sensation, learning, and memory. Majavaha Shrotas is governed by the following sub-doshas, Prana, Udana, Samana, Apana, and Vayana Vayu, Sadaka, Alochaka, and Brajaka Pitta, and Kledika, Tarpika, Avalambika, and Shleshika Kapha. Now, as I just mentioned, a primary function of Majavaha Shrotas is communication, and we can see that the sub doshas involved are related to receiving information from the senses and communicating this information throughout the body. The major subdoshas governing Majavaha Shrotas are Pranavayu, Sadaka Pitta, and Tarpika Kapha, as they correlate with the brain and its sensory functions. 
When examining the health of Majava Shrotas, the nervous system, the senses, coordination, memory, and the emotional state of the rogi should be taken into consideration. Now, some of the signs and symptoms of aggravation of Majavaha Shrotas are cracking, pain, stiffness or swelling in the joints, neurological symptoms, tingling, numbness, tremors, tics or spasms, ringing in the ears, feeling of darkness in front of the eyes, dizziness, lack of stability and equilibrium or vertigo, anxiety or fear, a lack of sleep or insomnia, sensitivity to noise, memory loss, short or long term, burning or coldness of hands and feet, Bell's palsy, which is facial paralysis, convulsions, seizures, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, neuralgia, which is pain along the nerve tract, and neuropathy. Now, the causes of aggravation of Majava Shrotas are various, but some may include poor quality diet, lots of vata aggravating foods like dry, light, cold, and raw foods, and also foods that are incompatible in regards combinations. And as I mentioned in most of these episodes, check out episode number 26 if you're not familiar with poor food combinations. Lifestyle, where you're always on the go, a little downtime, can really be a cause of aggravation for Majava Shrotas. Emotional stress, unresolved emotions, maybe an accident or trauma or shock to the body. Sleep issues like insomnia, stimulants, caffeine, alcohol, drugs, exposure to heavy metals, and bacterial or viral infections. Now, our prakriti, or birth constitution, plays a major role in determining the quality of the datus, our tissues, and the shrotas, our channels. And we know from episode number 288 on Ashtivaha shrotas that the vata dosha has an inverse relationship with the bone tissue, in that when the vata dosha is in excess, the quality of the bone tissue decreases, and as a result, the maja datu, our nervous tissue, and maja vahashrotas may be affected also as a vitiation of any of the doshas can be responsible for disturbing the function and structural integrity of the shrotas. In this case, we see a lot of causes of aggravation, which I just listed, are primarily aggravating for the vata dosha. The vata dosha is responsible for all movement in the body. Therefore, the vata dosha plays a major role in carrying out the functions of the majava shrotas, like communication between the senses, the brain, and the organs of action. However, the pitta and kapha doshas can aggravate majava shrotas also. Therefore, Ayurvedic treatment of an aggravation of majava shrotas will be tailored to the individual and address any possible dosha aggravations. One of the best treatments for majava shrotas is marma therapy, which is a healing practice with the focus on manipulating the subtle energy or prana in the body using marma points. There are 107 marma points in the body, which are considered to be access points to the body, mind, and consciousness. And these access points allow the flow of prana between the gross and the subtle body. Now, I discussed marma therapy in detail in episode number 96, so you can check that out. And another great treatment for Majavaha Shrota's aggravation is Panchakarma. It's recommended for cleansing and rejuvenating the body. Now, if you would like some guidance tailored to you and your lifestyle, Please check out my online services. I have online consultations where I put together a strategy for your diet, lifestyle, self-care, mindfulness, exercise, whatever else I think you need to help you maintain balance and prevent illness. And of course, I will also address any current imbalances you may have. And it's all tailored to your lifestyle so that it's easy to implement these changes and that they don't cause any extra overwhelm or stress.
I also offer private digestive reset cleanse, which is a great alternative to a panchakarma. Panchakarma is normally 21 days. And ideally, you go to an Ayurvedic clinic where you can be in a cocoon of healing. And for a lot of people, that's not possible. So a private digestive reset cleanse is something that can be done at home and under my supervision, and you get to choose your own dates. So that is something else I offer. It comes with a 90-minute consultation, so I can tailor the cleanse to you and your needs. I also have an educational program in the Daily Habits for Holistic Health program, which is a 28-day self-paced program. And this really helps you understand how to become your own healer, setting your life up to live in tune with the circadian rhythms and really starting on that path to self-realization, which is what studying Ayurveda and implementing these Ayurvedic principles is all about. Now, if you have any questions before you book any of my services, take advantage of my free 15-minute online services inquiry call where I can answer all your questions. So I hope you enjoy this episode on Maja Vahashrotas as we take this journey to breaking down this really in-depth Ayurvedic wisdom on each of the Shrotas, keeping these episodes short and sweet because there's a lot of condensed information here. And I hope you're finding it helpful. And if you think others would find it helpful, please share it with them so we can spread this wonderful wisdom of Ayurveda. If you haven't already subscribed or followed the podcast, please do so. And the new episodes will automatically download for you. And if you would like to rate and review the podcast, I would really appreciate that. You can find me on social media under Elements Healing and Wellbeing on Facebook. And my new Instagram page is Elements of Ayurveda Podcast. Please follow me there. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Be well and bye for now. Slonga Fold.